They made human flight possible, and every aircraft that has ever flown owes at least something to their work. What if I told you the Wright brothers weren't actually first? In Pineville, Louisiana, a black man named Charles Frederick Page built and patented an airship that could fly. He did this in 1903, the same year the Wright brothers took off at Kitty Hawk. But here's the crazy part. Page got his patent in April 1906, and the Wright brothers didn't get theirs until May 1906. I think that because he was a black man who had the audacity to try something that had never been done before, is probably one of the reasons why the model disappeared and the history was never corrected to show that. So why don't you know his name? That's what we're about to find out, and trust me, the answer is going to make your blood boil. Charles Frederick Page was born into slavery. Back then, teaching slaves to read was literally illegal. You could be beaten, mutilated, or killed just for learning your ABCs. But Page taught himself anyway. He learned to read and write in secret, which was basically a death sentence if he got caught. This wasn't just about education. It was an act of rebellion, a way to fight back against a system designed to keep him powerless. After slavery ended, Page became obsessed with flight. His family says he would watch dragonflies for hours, just staring at how they moved through the air. His grandson Joseph remembers the stories passed down through generations. Page would sit there in the Louisiana heat, watching these insects zoom around, studying every twist and turn. That's where it started, with a man watching bugs and dreaming of something impossible. Put this working model together and then paid to ship it off to St. Louis World Fair, and it never arrived. And so I, I'm imagining that was a huge disappointment to him. Around 1903, Page built something incredible. It wasn't like the Wright brothers' airplane at all. While they were focused on heavier-than-air flight with wings and engines, Page went a completely different direction. He designed an airship with two balloons, not one. The dual balloon system let him control how high or low the ship went by adjusting the gas inside each balloon. He could fine-tune his altitude in ways other inventors hadn't even thought about yet. The airship had a hull that looked like a sailboat. Inside, there was a gas engine that powered a propeller at the back for forward movement and a rudder for steering left and right. It was lighter than air, floating like a balloon but with real control over direction and speed. While the Wright brothers were figuring out how to keep a heavy plane in the sky using wings and aerodynamics, Page was solving the problem from the opposite angle using buoyancy. Here's where the timeline gets really interesting. Page started building his airship around 1903, the exact same time the Wright brothers were testing their flyer at Kitty Hawk. These two completely different approaches to human flight were happening at the exact same moment, hundreds of miles apart. While everyone knows what happened at Kitty Hawk, almost nobody knows what was happening in Pineville. Page filed for his patent in 1903. The Wright brothers filed for theirs in March 1903, about a month before Page. But patents take time to process, and here's where things get wild. Page received his patent on April 10, 1906. The Wright brothers got theirs on May 22, 1906. That's more than a month later. So technically, on paper, Charles Frederick Page holds the first patent for a flying machine in American aviation history. A black man who taught himself to read, who was born a slave, got the first aviation patent in America. But Page didn't just want a patent to hang on his wall. He wanted to show the world what he built. In 1904, there was this huge event called the Louisiana Purchase Exposition in St. Louis. Think of it like a World's Fair, a massive celebration with exhibits from all over the world. They were hosting a competition for flying machines, and the prize was $100,000. For context, that's around $3 million in today's money. Life-changing cash. Page took every penny he had saved and built a full-size working model of his airship. He tested it at home in Pineville, and it flew. His family watched it fly. His neighbors saw it. Local newspapers even wrote about it. There were actual reports in Louisiana papers talking about this black man who built a flying machine. This wasn't just a drawing or a theory anymore. It was real. It worked. So Page carefully packed up his airship and shipped it by train to St. Louis. He was going to follow it there, show it off to the judges, demonstrate how it flew, win that prize, and change his family's life forever. He was going to become a name everyone remembered. The airship never made it to St. Louis. It vanished. Just gone. No explanation, no record, no apology, nothing. One day it's on a train heading to the biggest opportunity of Page's life, and the next day it's like it never existed. 
The train arrived, but his airship didn't. There's no official report about what happened to it. No investigation. No railroad company taking responsibility. It just disappeared. Now, there's no smoking gun here. There's no document that says someone stole it or destroyed it on purpose. But here's what we know about America in 1904. This was the height of the Jim Crow era. This was when black people who became too successful, who made white people look bad, didn't just lose their businesses, they lost their lives. Entire communities full of black people were burned to the ground for the crime of doing well. Tulsa's Black Wall Street was destroyed in 1921. Rosewood, Florida was wiped off the map in 1923. And those are just the famous ones. Lynchings were common. Theft was even more common. White people would steal inventions from black creators, file patents under their own names through racist courts, or just take credit for work they never did. And if a black person tried to fight back, they could end up dead. That was the reality of America in 1904. Historian Michael Wynn has spent years researching Page's story. He puts it bluntly, a black man had the nerve to try something no one else had done, had the audacity to compete on a national stage, and in 1904 America, that was dangerous. Joseph Page, Charles's grandson, believes the model was stolen or destroyed specifically because his grandfather was black. He thinks someone saw that a black man built this incredible machine, saw that he might actually win this competition and become famous and wealthy, and decided that couldn't be allowed to happen. And honestly, looking at the history, what other explanation makes sense? A groundbreaking invention that newspapers wrote about, that people saw fly, just disappears on its way to a major competition. That doesn't happen by accident, the loss destroyed Page. Not just financially, though he had put his entire life savings into that airship. Every dollar he'd ever earned, every bit of money he'd scraped together, gone. But worse than the money was the emotional devastation. He had poured years of work into this. All his dreams, everything he hoped for his family, his chance to prove himself to a world that saw him as less than human, all of it was invested in that machine. And it was just taken from him. His granddaughter Katie Williams says she was told about the invention when she was young. She heard the stories about how her grandfather built an airship, how it flew, how it was going to change everything. But then it disappeared, and so did her grandfather's dreams. She believes the airship was number one, believes it could have won that competition if it had just made it to St. Louis. She thinks someone found it on that train, realized a black man made it, and either destroyed it or stole it to claim as their own. Page never built another airship. He couldn't. He had a family to feed, and he'd already gambled everything once. The risk was too high, and the disappointment was too crushing. He didn't have another life savings to invest. So instead, he turned to other work. He became a farmer. He made bricks. He produced coal for fuel. He did carpentry. He did whatever he could to serve his community and take care of his family. Joseph Page says his grandfather had to care for his family. He never saw an opportunity to gather that amount of money again, and he wasn't going to deny his family a decent living to chase another dream that might get stolen. So he never pursued aviation again. And that's the tragedy here. Who knows what else Charles Frederick Page could Golden have invented? Who knows Golden what other innovations died with that to. airship? And here's that, the worst part, uh, his name at, disappeared too. While the Wright brothers became legends, while every kid in, in America learned about Kitty Hawk in school, Charles Frederick Page was like erased. That. His they achievement, his patent, his innovation, all of it was buried under the weight of racism and forgotten by history. It's like the system didn't just steal his airship, it stole his legacy. For over a century, nobody talked about him outside of his family. No textbooks mentioned him. No museums displayed his work. No history documentaries told his story. Aviation history books would go into detail about all kinds of early flight attempts. But Page's name was nowhere to be found. It was like he never existed. His descendants knew the truth, passed the story down through generations, but to the rest of the world he was invisible. Think about what that means. Think about how many kids grew up believing that only white men invented things. Only white men were smart enough to innovate. Only white men contributed to American progress. And it's not true. But when you erase people like Charles Frederick Page from history, when you bury their achievements, that's the message you send. But in 2020, things started to change. Writer and amateur historian Michael Wynn began digging into Louisiana aviation history. He was looking for local stories that hadn't been told, and he found something incredible. Old newspaper articles from 1904 talking about a black man in Pineville who flew an airship. At first, he wasn't sure if it was real or just a tall tale, but Wynn kept digging. 
He went through patent records and there it was, Charles F. Page's patent, filed in 1903, granted in April 1906. He found the drawings, the technical specifications, everything. The story was real. Wynn spent years researching, collecting every piece of evidence he could find. He tracked down Page's descendants and heard the family stories that had been passed down for generations. He found more newspaper articles, more documentation, and he started telling people about it. He started saying this story is unbelievable, not just because it happened, but because it's been ignored until now. In 2023, things really started moving. Pineville finally put up a historical marker recognizing Page's contribution to aviation. It's a small thing, just a plaque, but it matters. It means his name is now permanently part of the town's history. The Louisiana State Museum created an exhibit called Pioneer Skies, from freedom to flight featuring Page's story alongside other black aviation pioneers. They wanted to show that black people have been involved in aviation from the very beginning, that this history is rich and diverse and has been hidden for too long. Then, in July 2024, they unveiled an exhibit at Louis Armstrong New Orleans International Airport. Think about that placement. Travelers from all over the world, people getting on and off planes, can now learn about Charles Frederick Page. They can see his patent drawings, read about his airship, understand what he accomplished. Joseph Page, now an old man himself, drove down from Alexandria for the airport unveiling. He said it was significant not just for his family, but for all of central Louisiana. His grandfather was finally getting the recognition he deserved. After more than 120 years, the truth was finally coming out. He said that for his grandfather to finally be recognized for his contribution to aviation, it's a big deal. It means the lies are being corrected. But here's what Joseph Page also said, and this is important. He thinks whenever the Wright brothers are mentioned, his grandfather should be mentioned too. Not instead of the Wright brothers, but alongside them. Both invented flying machines. Both filed patents around the same time. Both contributed to the dream of human flight. The difference is one of them got celebrated and the other got erased. Page's approach was different from the Wright brothers, but it wasn't less valid. They focused on heavier-than-air flight, using wings and aerodynamics. Page focused on lighter-than-air flight using buoyancy and gas-filled balloons. Both approaches had merit. Both showed incredible innovation. Both represented different paths to solving the same problem. How do we get humans into the sky? The Wright brothers' design eventually became the standard for modern airplanes, but that doesn't mean Page's design was wrong or useless. Airships and blimps are still used today for specific purposes. The Goodyear blimp flies over sporting events. Airships are used for advertising, surveillance, and research. Page's dual balloon system was innovative for its time and showed a level of engineering knowledge that's impressive even by today's standards. And let's be clear about something else. Page did all of this with way less resources than the Wright brothers had. The Wright brothers owned a bicycle shop. They had money, equipment, tools, a workshop. They had time to experiment and fail and try again. Page was a former slave working in Louisiana during Jim Crow. He had to teach himself to read and write. He had to build everything with his own hands while also working to survive. The fact that he accomplished anything at all is amazing. The fact that he built a working airship and got a patent before the Wright brothers did is absolutely incredible. Charles Frederick Page's story isn't just about one man. It's about how many other black inventors, scientists, and creators we've lost to history because racism decided their achievements didn't matter. How many patents were stolen? How many inventions were destroyed? How many brilliant minds were silenced because the color of their skin was seen as a threat? We know about Garrett Morgan, who invented the traffic light and the gas mask. We know about Louis Latimer, who improved the light bulb and worked with Thomas Edison. We know about George Washington Carver and his work with peanuts. But how many don't we know about? How many Charles Frederick Pages are out there, their stories lost forever because nobody thought to write them down or preserve them? This erasure wasn't an accident. It was deliberate. It was part of a system designed to make black people believe they weren't capable of innovation, weren't smart enough to invent things, weren't important enough to be remembered. And it worked for a long time, but stories like Pages prove that it was all a lie. Page filed his patent at the same time as the Wright brothers. He received his patent before them. He built a completely different type of flying machine that solved the problem of flight from a unique angle. He tested it, and it flew. And yet, for 120 years, almost nobody knew his name. That's not an accident. That's not an oversight. That's systemic racism working exactly as it was designed to work. 
but that's changing now. The historical marker in Pineville, the museum exhibits, the airport display, these are all steps in the right direction. More people are learning about Charles Frederick Page. More researchers are digging into black history and finding stories that were buried. More descendants of forgotten inventors are speaking up and demanding recognition for their ancestors. It shouldn't have taken this long. When teachers talk about the Wright brothers and the birth of aviation, Charles Frederick Page's name should be right there with them. Not as a footnote, not as a did you know, fact that gets mentioned in February during Black History Month and forgotten the rest of the year, but as a real pioneer who contributed to human flight.